Boom! It's 10 at 10 time, and your favorite Maple guys are back with another 10 at 10 video. I'm Tim. I'm Matt. And we're the Mr. Maple guys, MrMaple.com. If you don't know us, check us out, MrMaple.com. <laughs> we list 10 new plants every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Today's 10 at 10 are 10 of the 20 plants getting listed on June 28th, 2022. So this shows you about the sizes they are right now. Uh, and these are available for purchase right now. If you're purchasing this at a later time or an earlier time, they could definitely be different sizes. So keep that in mind. But we add at least 10 new trees every Tuesday at 10 a.m. This week we're listing 20. If you want to know about the full listing for today's 20, make sure to be on at 10 a.m. and check out quick. When you add them to your cart, it doesn't hold them for you until you check out. So keep that in mind. But we've got 20 new trees. And if you sign up for our weekly emails on mrmaple.com, you find out at 9 a.m. with an email of the full listing of 20 trees. So you've got time to prepare for 10 a.m. Hey, and also if you're purchasing at an earlier time, swing by and let us see your time machine. <laughs> but let's get into it. We got a good 10 at 10 here. We got some cool stuff. We'll dive right into it. I'll start on my side of the table with Naka Komodo weeping. <laughs> I saw Matt jumped right to the right instead of the left like we normally do because we want to talk about this one. This one's awesome. If you haven't seen some of our video on uh, amazing weeping Japanese maples, uh, this one is spectacular. It's one of our favorites. A nice uh, selection from Japan. It's at a temple there in Japan. We got to go visit. It's over 400 years old with a twisting, contorting shape. And it just hooks around. I mean, it's one of the, it's the national treasure of Japan. So getting to see this plant is pretty amazing. Check out our photos on Mr. Maple. You can see some of our photos at Nakakomoto mm -hmm. Weeping and the shape. It's killer. I've got some great shots at this. At some point, I'm going to get with Brian. We're going to record some new audio for it. We're going to do a deep dive on getting to go and see the national treasure tree of Japan. In different accounts, you may have heard us say 600 years or 400 years. We've heard different things from different people in Japan. We've been going with the more conservative 400 years, but it's a very old tree. So here's a chance to own one of these amazing plants. Uh, it's the granddaddy to Ryusin and so many other forms. Naka Komodo weeping though. Can't go wrong with it. Really nice bold oranges in the fall. Excellent low weeping form. We have these unstaked. Uh, so these are kind of a medium sized unstaked right now. And uh, you could stake them up to get as tall as you want, but it's gonna have that weeping format to it. Now these do get a little bit wider than Ryusin. They're still gonna be weeping, but they're gonna be more umbrella shaped versus you know dome shaped like Ryusin. Really awesome plant though, national treasure of Japan. It's at a temple there in Japan, the Fukushima Prefecture. And it's just one of the coolest Japanese maples I've ever seen in my life. I mean, it's, it's pretty spectacular. Uh, this is one that's pretty awesome too. It's at Acer Palmatum Peve Stanley. Now, Piet Vergelt, you know, a lot of people will say, what does that Peve mean? Uh, Piet Vergelt puts his signature on so many of his plants there with that Peve, and that stands for our friends Piet Vergelt. Uh, Tyne Vergelt, his son, actually came and visited our nursery a couple years ago, and it was a real honor to get to show him around here. We took him to several different gardens in Western North Carolina and just had a blast uh, talking plants. But uh, Peve Stanley is a real nice compact form with a really interesting leaf. It's got a little bit more of that heavy Matson Murray style leaf, so it's a divided leaf. Very, very dark in its color. It's a very, very dark red. Can get some really nice maroon new growth, and then a very, very bold dark red in the fall as well. An interesting concept of I've heard some people try to put this in that category with the Cecilifoliums, hmm. because some of the reversions of Cecilifoliums can have a similar effect, but I've never seen anything this black dark before yeah. with this interesting leaf shape. I mean, it's really unique and really different. And Peve Stanley, is just one of those plants that's just so unique because of that darker, darker leaf. Yeah, maybe sometime we'll need to do a deep dive like we do with, say, like the Ghost series, but on the Peve series and do just a series of the Peve plants. Uh, American, we talked about a couple weeks ago, would definitely be in that category too, one of the few without Peve in it. But Peve Stanley, one of the more sought after of the Peves for the Palmatums. I mean, it's always popular for us. It's compact, it's nice, it's got great color. This one works zones five through nine and can handle full sun up to zone eight. You wanna give it protection in zone nine from sun, but, uh, but an excellent dark red for sure. And the leaf shape is just so unique on Peve Stanley. I mean, there's nothing else like it in the nursery trade. And it's a plant that I like because the leaf shape's so unique, but that dark color contrasts so well against some of your yellows, some of your greens, that it really adds as a great plant out there in the landscape and garden as a nice upright. So next up we have Acer Palmatum Coralinum. Now, an excellent dwarf plant with a ton of spring impact. This one won't last long, check out quick. This is a vibrant, vibrant, vibrant coral pink in the spring. And then uh, later on in the summer, it goes to a, more of this green color with some nice oranges to reds in the fall. 
but mm -hmm. a nice, more compact, rounded mm -hmm. shaped Japanese maple. So think of this as more like a flowering shrub because when this plant is just in that bright, bright pink stage, mm -hmm. it can beat any flower in the garden. Now, people think of Shinda Sojo, Shishio Improved, and De Sojo as great ones for bonsai. I would definitely recommend trying Coralinum for that as well. You're already more compact. You're very similar leaf shape to De Sojo, very similar leaf size to De Sojo, but you're gonna get a little different color variance there too. So you're gonna get that neon pink you know, versus that kind of red pink. So it's a really nice color for that. Already more compact. I mean, if you let this grow out, it's gonna be more of a small dome shape on its own. So it's gonna fill out to more of a, a denser habit than something like she, uh, Shin De Sojo. And morning sun, afternoon shade will hold those coral pinks longer throughout the season. Although this plant can handle more sun and probably zone 7B to almost 8A, mm -hmm. um, but protection from in those hotter zones. Uh, if you give this, put this tree in full sun, you will get that pink color real quickly, mm -hmm. but then it'll start fading out a lot quicker as well. So if you can give it some protection from the hot afternoon sun with some strong morning uh, sun, you're gonna really be able to get some nice colors on this and hold it as long as you can throughout the season. Yeah, when I think of this plant, I think of just an amazing one I saw at Kew Gardens when I was visiting there uh, in England, just blew my socks off. I mean, just an amazing plant. Um, definitely one you should think about for container gardening. It's easy to grow in containers or ground. You know, always ground is the easiest. So if you're not gonna pay attention to one in a container, put it right in the ground, because that's the easiest fail-proof way to grow a Japanese maple. But this is a good candidate for container gardening for sure. Um, and just a nice compact dwarf with a lot of color to it. Yeah, it's one of my favorites for spring color and being a nice rounded habit. Now, one thing I'll do it while we're on this one, sometimes you'll see a little bit of spotting on this one, and often that one gets turned into happy Coralinum, but I think it's very similarly the same plant. It's, it's not uncommon to get kind of a dusting over top of this one. Yeah, yeah. A lot of those pink colors are actually a style of variegation, and in certain climates or certain years, you can mm -hmm. see that sort of dusting variegation in there that causes that spring color. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So speaking of variegation, this is Acer Palmatum Uzanishki. I remember the first time I saw oh, this man. on Facebook in one of the Taiwanese groups, people were posting photos of this and the colors mm. are just unreal. It's a splotched variegation in the springtime. It's got some purple in there too. Uh, and the leaf shape is real jagged. This makes a plant that's just awesome out there with some pink and white splotched variegation and with some purples in the early yeah. spring or first leaf sap. It's one of the craziest variegated plants we do. It's, it's early spring, it almost has like a purple border to the eye of variegation. It's so crazy. We're definitely uh, to blame for helping get this one popular in America. Uh, I'll leave it at that, but there's a lot of greatness to this one. We've, uh, we've kind of put it under our wing and made it something we do a lot of here at our nursery. And uh, it's one we've tried to help popularize for sure for its variegated style. I think it's one of the most consistent and dramatically variegated Japanese maples we do. Um, if you love variegated plants, it's definitely one to check out. Uh, just lovely there in the garden. That spring garden, it is almost unrivaled for pink and white. Yeah, I, I love the plant because it's so unique. Like I said, whenever we saw it on Facebook, it became one of those coveted plants we had to get because it was so unique and so different for some of the variegated plants. But it almost has just like a, a border to it in the spring mm -hmm. on top of being that dusting variegation. You're gonna to wanna to photograph this one a million times because it looks different every season too. And in the summer right now with all this variegation, it's spectacular. In the springtime, it's spectacular. And I mean, you're just seeing lots of multiple tones of cream, mint, green. And in the springtime, you get a lot more pinks. Mm -hmm. You get some pinks up here on the new growth and even purples. It's a plant that you're gonna love. You want to give it some protection from the hot afternoon sun, mm. but this is a plant that's really special. These are going to work zones five through nine. I definitely recommend late day shade. That's that 3 p.m. on protection. You don't want to give it late day sun. Awesome tree. I do like it because it tends to be a little bit more multi-stemmed and denser. So it's a little wider down low than a lot of the other Aridno Nishki style variegations. It's pretty much the most extreme form of that Aridno style variegation though. But the other thing too is the older growth on this plant appears to be heavily variegated. Mm -hmm. So it's not one that you have to prune a lot of, but on this style of irrigation, it doesn't revert. So if it ever does start to not show any green, give it a light pruning in late February, and you're gonna get a lot of irrigation all across the plant. That's always a great way to encourage irrigation more, even more on this style of irrigation. So next up we have Acer Palmatum Seki Atsubusa. Would you put this one in the Makawa family or not? I don't know, it's, it's so different. I mean, it's more in that Miss Piggy family where right. it's just got that <laughs> crazy seca growth where you see from this one spot here instead of having two 
thing branches come off. We have one, two, three, four, five, six yeah. branches coming off and lots of leaves because what this plant does is it breaks all the rules for um, being in Acer. Yeah. I mean, the buds aren't- Alternating buds, a alternating. not gonna happen here. This, this is a, you see these mutations sometimes, it's kind of like secatrated or even fasciated growth that has this gnarly, you know, the buds just come out of everywhere. I mean, when you look up the branching of this plant, you'll see, you know, just irregular buds all the way around the plant and no pattern at all. And branches come out of all that. It makes it super interesting. I think especially interesting even out of leaf. I got some photos out of leaf. This almost looks like a cactus because it's got that red buds in the spring. Just looks super wicked. I love this plant. And, um, very unique though, very unique. And the second traits often form little curls to them, which is pretty awesome. Uh, but this is a nice slow growing dwarf, typically reaching about six to eight foot in 10 years. So not a real giant tree, but this tree can handle uh, full sun, probably up to zone eight A, I guess. Mm -hmm and uh, give it some protection in a hot afternoon sun other than that, uh, but. Equally as durable as Makawa. I mean, yeah. it's in that category of like super durable, heat tolerant sun plants. Uh, this one's gonna work zones five through nine. We definitely do recommend that protection in zone nine. Green in the spring, going red in the fall. Uh, excellent candidate for bonsai or container culture. It'd probably be a fun bonsai to do because it's gonna be irregular as all heck. So it's not gonna fit your normal bonsai. I mean, if you're a, if you're a true bonsai master and you're gonna go through all the basic techniques, this one's gonna throw buds on everywhere, so it's gonna drive you crazy. But if you wanted a really unique, interesting bonsai with small foliage, I mean, it would be really cool. It would be a really cool one to see done in a bonsai style. So next up, we've got one of my favorite conifers, Suga pendula. Uh, this is a weeping hemlock. So this is one of those hemlocks that's gonna have that cascading umbrella form. Give it some protection from the hot afternoon sun because this is a hemlock. Mm. But this is such a cool one that's going to have some of those twisted, contorted shapes and a nice weeping habit. This one's always super popular for us. Uh, we wanted to get it here on camera. These are our 1.5s. We sometimes list these as a 1, but they're more of a 1.5. Uh, these tend to sell out for us. They're always super popular. Uh, people love the weeping hemlocks. Pendula is probably the most popular form of that for us. And uh, just makes a nice, you know, waterfall type effect. I mean, it definitely has that cascading uh that, that almost waterfall looking plant to it, where it looks like a small waterfall. I mean, all the growth overlays and this density to it gets nice and full and just has a really nice appearance there in the garden. Makes a great accompaniment to red lace leaves or uh, you know other colorful Japanese maples there in the garden for sure. And the hemlock's one of those plants that grows in a similar condition than with uh, that Japanese maples also grow in. And so it's gonna be a plant that likes some morning sun, some afternoon shade, some partial sun coming through uh, it's one of those hemlocks and evergreens that really does well in most Japanese maple gardens. So let's see, next up here, looks like we have Ghost Dancer back. Uh, Ghost Dancer, not actually part of the Ghost series, although Talon said he kind of includes it. This was one his friend named that lived next door to him and Talon liked it so much he was like, I'll allow it. So he, he kept it, the ghost name on that. He actually produces these himself now. Uh, ghost Dancer, excellent reticulated variegation to it. Now, the thing I like about Ghost Dancer is in the spring, you really get some of that purplish kind of borders to it with that reticulation. And uh, this was introduced the same time Talon was introducing the Ghost series. Mm -hmm. And so they were both kind of thinking along the same lines, kind of like how we were introducing Hot Blonde while Talon was introducing Blonde Beauty. I mean, similar names, but just that same, you know, it's what's in a name. If you get a really good name for a plant, you better go with it. And they were both thinking the same thing for these reticulated types. Yeah, he's kind of like the quasi member of the Ghost series there. He's, he's a Ghost series cousin. <laughs> he's, he's like not really the Care Bears, but like when they showed up with those weird line ones. <laughs> no, but it, it, this is a solid Japanese maple <laughs> that you want to give some protection from the hot afternoon sun, but it's a nice reticulated Japanese maple. So you really see the etching of the veins, but has a really nice serrated edge to it. Love this plant. I mean, it's uh, it's super variegated. You get some really soft tones in it too. New growth can be just really, really light colors. Uh, it's really interesting. And then next up, we've got one of our favorite Japanese maples. Uh, this one holds a special spot in our hearts because we were one of the people that helped popularize this uh, plant in America. And it's Acer Palmatum Lillian's Jewel. You may see this uh, sold incorrectly as uh, Acer Palmatum Little Annie's Jewel. No, and, it's not. 
It's, it's not that. It's not extravaganza. The correct name on this plant is Lillian's Jewel. And it's an uh, amazing plant with some uh, pinks and whites. It's a fairly heat tolerant plant too. I mm. mean, a lot of people say once this plant's established, this is a plant that handles a lot of heat fairly well. We've seen it growing in Simpsonville, South Carolina, doing fantastic. But the colors on this are just unreal. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to anybody who's been following Mr. Maple since the Maple Mafia days on YouTube or on eBay. We used to sell on eBay as Maple Mafia. That was a joke Mike Wilson would call us the Maple Mafia. And so we became the Maple Mafia on YouTube, uh, or excuse me, on uh, eBay. And uh, Lillian's Jewel, wow, that was the crown jewel of our eBay days. That would sell for graphs for just astronomical prices. Uh, when this was early on, I mean, we've had this tree since 08, 09, probably 09, probably right around 09 when we started getting this out there. And uh, I mean, in those days, it wasn't uncommon for a graft to sell for over two hundred dollars. It was oh, three hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. It was a very popular plant. Uh, we've since made it popular enough that it's, it's brought that price down to much more reasonable numbers. Uh, we list season one gallons for forty-five. You can see why it's one of our favorite variegated plants. We've turned a lot of people onto this one. You know, talent named Rainbow, and we showed him this one, and he's been doing this one a lot now too. Uh, we think it's the most consistent and most stable version of a pink on red. So that pink on red style variegation, uh, these just hold that very, very well. You know, not to be confused with something like Geisha Gone Wild, it's a different style of variegation, but that splotched, swirling pink on red variegation, there's not a more consistent one than Lillian's Jewel. You want to give this one some sun because that really picks up the red, brighter red colors in this. This one is a much brighter red color than something like Rainbow. That's going to be a much darker red. And the pinks and white on mm -hmm. this are often both on this plant at the same time. And so the colors are just unreal. It's one of those plants that if you love variegated plants, this mm -hmm. is a must have. If you hate variegated plants, this one's probably gonna give you a heart attack. <laughs> it's so gaudy. It's the most crazy variegated thing we do. <laughs> like right now, it's more white, green, and red. Early spring, it's neon pink on bright, bright red. I mean, it's like wow factor plant to max. I yeah, mean, if you hate variegated plants, yeah, this you probably should stay away from this because this thing is super variegated. If you hate Japanese maples and variegation, this one will do you in right here. That, that would be the heart stopper right there. <laughs> so this is one that we haven't listed for a while, so it probably won't last too long. Um, this is Acer Palmatum uh, Shigarami, not to be confused with Shiranami. Uh, Shigarami is awesome because this is a really classic Japanese maple with a nice purple red border in the early spring. It's definitely one of the older Japanese ones. I forget whether it's on the 1700s list. I'd have to look, but it's back there in that. It, if not it's, 1700s, it's slightly after. It's close, yeah, it's close yeah. if not. Uh, beautiful purple border to this one when it first leaves out too. It's gonna be kind of in that Tsusumagaki vein of having that purple nails on each leaf. And the new growth there in the summer is just sort of this sort of, mm -hmm. sort of coral to red It's a color smaller cut to leaf though. It's a little smaller and a little tighter style foliage to it. Uh, definitely a fun older cultivar though. Uh, if you're into the old cultivars, you know, Shigarami is a must have. Um, I, I love this plant for the spring color. That's really what knocks me off, my socks off. But the fall color is really nice too. It's a kind of an orange to red. Yeah, and really nice colors like Matt was talking about. Can handle a little more sun. We're talking like again with those plants that can maybe be able to handle up to zone 8A in full sun. Uh, more heat tolerant than something like a Sumagaki. Mm -hmm where Sumagaki would need some protection from hot afternoon sun, you can get a similar effect with this, but something that's a little more heat tolerant than Sumagaki. A nice upright uh, manner um, on this as well, but there's also a plant that could do well in the shade mm -hmm. and still give you everything that this plant has, from the, the purple red border mm -hmm. to really good fall color and a really nice tree out there in the landscape and garden. Now, again, this one's gonna work zones five through nine, definitely protection in zone nine. If you can give it that 3 p.m. on shade, you're gonna hold that spring color longer into the season as well. I mean, next up we've got Mayday. Wait a second, did I say Mayday? <laughs> Mayday may be on this 10 at 10, just a heads up for anybody. Uh, but the next one is Otohime. Tim's just skipping me over. I think I didn't get to introduce the last three. Otohime <laughs> is, um, this one was named after Dr. Otto Octavius from Spider-Man, uh, Dr. Octopus. <laughs> Uh, really into bonsai and his downtime from being a super villain, <laughs> and that's how Otohime came to be. Okay, so you may have heard that that fun little story. It's actually named after the uh, Queen of the Sea in, in, in Japanese. It's a dwarf, flat-topped uh, type that has real small and very wide. 
Uh, it's a selection. Uh, down, remember they've got some giant ones down at SFA Gardens. Oh yeah, beautiful, beautiful plant. And uh, unfortunately, down at SFA Gardens, a student came and he has these gorgeous autohemes. And he came and broke branches out to make a smiley face so it looks like a Pac-Man. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. That's, that's, that. that's crazy. But this is an awesome little dwarf that stays short and wide and uh, can definitely handle, uh, you know, to about zone seven and full sun. You start going to zone eight, give it some protection from mm -hmm. the hot afternoon sun. But this is such a cool little tree. Great for bonsai, great for containers. Another compact one that's gonna be in that family with Kiyohime and Murasaki Kiyohime, uh, Kapershi Dwarf. Think of it in that vein. It's definitely a small, compact form. When you get these side by side, you can see some, some definite differences. Uh, typically, this one has more of a soft border than the Kiyohime, but kind of a nice color as well. It's a little bit more red purple, but just excellent colors too. And, and more in the shape in line of the Kapershi Dwarf. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be short and wide. Very dense. Yeah, and very, very, very dense. Uh, but definitely a really cool plant that's really unusual and really different. This one works zones five through nine. Again, protection in zone nine. But another excellent candidate for bonsai if you're into bonsai, uh, you know, or just putting this one in a big container. You can't go wrong with auto him in a container. Just makes a nice little, you know, we call them toadstools almost for that shape. Yeah. Wow, guys, thanks for watching our Tenant 10. We hope you enjoyed this look at the Tenant 10 for today. Again, all these trees will be going live at 10 a.m. Eastern. So we greatly appreciate you watching our premiere videos. We're premiering these 10 at 10 videos every Tuesday at 9 a.m. to give you that heads up. But to be ready, that 10 at 10 starts at 10 a.m. Eastern time on the dot. And this is only 10 of the 20 items getting listed. So make sure you go on mrmaple.com at 10 a.m. to see the other 10. And make sure to sign up for our weekly email so you get that heads up for next week's. We greatly appreciate you watching this amazing assortment of Japanese maples we're trying to bring to you each and every week. And uh, you know, remember the best way to support this channel is by shopping on mrmaple.com. So make sure you add these to your cart and check out really quickly because many of these are gonna sell out really quickly. And also share this video with your gardening friends because if you like this video, they probably will too. Hey, if you're watching this one live, we're still doing a giveaway. Hashtag Japanese maples gets you in there. We're gonna be giving away some gift cards soon. We greatly appreciate everybody continuing to like, subscribe, and share. Our channel's been growing so much, and as a result, we're able to do more content. So we greatly appreciate that. We plan on doing all kinds of new fun stuff for you guys. So the more likes and more views these things get, the, uh, just the more we get fed into outlandish, crazy ideas to go and travel and do more video content for you. So we hope you're enjoying all this new style content. Definitely check out our Azalea videos. We've got some crazy ones coming up. You know, I even hiked up Hooper or uh, Gregory Bald with them. So if I made up that 12 mile hike that day, y'all definitely need to check that video out. It's gonna be insane. The drone footage alone is nuts, but the content and the information you're gonna get in that one, I'll throw in a plug for it, definitely check it out. We'll do it as a premiere in an upcoming video, but we would greatly appreciate your support and liking and sharing that one especially because the native plants don't hit the algorithm quite the same. They're not quite as popular as some of our other plants. So definitely share that one and get it out there with people. And if you have any love for plants, check out those videos because just seeing these plants in nature in full bloom is amazing. I mean, I, I was awestruck by it and I've become more of a native plant fan just by right. seeing it because of how amazing those experiences were. Hey, don't forget that hashtag Japanese maples. You can put that on every single video and that's a chance to win a Mr. Maple gift card coming up soon. Take care. God bless. And have a great day.